Hello and welcome back to Pentiment. It is Christmas Eve, everyone is drinking, and it is time for our investigation to continue. And we're going to start upstairs. Why? Well, I think everybody important to speak to is downstairs, so we're going to start with the people who are less likely to advance the plot. Like Werner. What? Merry Christmas, Werner. Hmm, what's merry about it? Um, let's see what you're going to say. Are you still on a raving crusade against God? Hmm. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Um, you don't remember your diatribe last month in this very inn? Ah. Uh, see, I've told you before, Werner. Did I ask you, Baltasar? No, no, be merry, my friends. Drink and be merry. Finally, someone with some sense. Um, you two have been fighting for years. Isn't right now the perfect time to resolve your disagreements? No. I fear that ship may have sailed a while ago, Magdalene. God teaches us all to forgive. Actually, no, we're not going to mention God. I can't believe that. It's never too late. If God has willed it, there's little you can do, my dear. What he said. <laughs> ah, perfect bar of opportunity. You know, all I see are two obstinate asses who truly deserve one another. She has caught you there, my friend Baltus. Don't take her side, Gnazu. I'm sorry, but if she is right, she is right. Oh, I refuse to get myself roped into this foolishness. Um, The fools here are still you two. You are becoming quite tiresome with this, Magdalene. Right, Baltus? Yes, quite so. Well, see that's a start. Continue just like that. You must always get your way, is that it? Ah, the fiendishness of youth. Please go enjoy the feast and release our aging souls from your torment. Perhaps a dance later, hmm? We'll see. Um, you know what? Hmm, why not? Until later, gentlemen. S see, I thought that those two had something going on. Maybe, you know, maybe, you know. Anyway. Hello, Endress. Very cri oh, happy Christmas, Magdalene. Magdalene, dear. Merry Christmas, Magda. God bless. Merry Christmas, everyone. How are you enjoying the feast? Utterly delightful. A hearty meal and a, bug of, and a mug of Baltus's latest brew. Everything a soul could wish for. Is everything your ample belly could wish for? I am as God made me in his infinite wisdom. Um, well, I'm sure the cookies I made proved helpful with the girth as well. Indeed, they were most satisfying. Yes, very tasty. Well done. It's been wonderful watching you grow into the person you are, Magdalene. Klaus must be proud. Um, he is in his way. For a man of words, he has trouble with words. We all sometimes get our tongues tied during what matters the most. Especially after a few beers, eh? Hehe. <laughs> oh no, the drink only loosens the tongue. Um, I see plenty. I sense plenty of brazenness. Is the brew treating you well? A veritable salve against any affliction. The inventor has outdone himself. My God, it brings me such joy to look at the families gathered here tonight. The laughter of children running around, the love that brings a community together. We are blessed. Um, well, it's certainly better than all the arguing. As long as you have moments like this to realize that we matter to each other. Well said, darling. To the four of us. Naj, the Ravi. Salute. I'm so happy I married you, Endress. The day I was inspired to come find you in Innsbruck was the most important day of my life. Ah, love at long last. We know the feeling, don't we, Wojtlaw? 
The path before us was filled with thorns and thistles, but we endured. Make sure to prepare for that, Magdalen. There will always be some thorns on the path. I was talking about um, other changes in the previous episode that could have mattered. Like, if we had pinned her for the murder, this would not be happening right now. Now, does it matter a lot? I don't know. But it would definitely change his demeanor right now. It would change an awful lot of things along to this path. So, it was interesting. Um, hmm, what's next for you happy couples? Any plans for children? I fear we've become too old for that. Hmm. Time will tell with us, I suppose. I'm not so young either. All things considered, it's best left for God to determine. Well, I'm quite certain it will require some effort from you two as well. Oh, God, I'd do barbs every time. <laughs> uh, what I'd give to be a brazen youth again. Now, Endress, you're lovely just the way you are. Amen. Well, I'll let you return to the celebrations. Stay safe, dear. Make the most of this night. You've earned it. Bless you, Magdalene. Enjoy the feast. God bless you. Hey, if that's one of the first times our barb has not been a pure insult and has been like a little bit of a joke. We used our powers for good, not evil. Right. Hello, Eva. Magdalene, you finally came over to say hello. Um, so you've decided to use my full name now, have you? You asked me to. You've never listened to me before now. Ah, he's playing nice in front of us. Hello, Magdalene. Happy Christmas, Eva, Till. Magdalene, how good to see you. How is the mural coming along in the rat house? I almost finished with it, I hear. That's right, last I heard about it, you were still working on the middle section. The history of the saints, right? Um. Let's see what we're going to say. I finished with that section now. The old abbey ruins were hard to climb through, but I wanted to paint it right. Oh, but the remains of the abbey are so run down. That sounds dangerous. You went into the old abbey, Magdalene, without me? I, I hate being mean, but I gotta do it. I love it, but I hate it. You're clumsy, Ox. Your big feet would only slow me down. I don't have big feet. Don't worry, your father had big feet, Ox. He made up for it in other ways. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm sure you will, too. Oh my god, Mom. Ha! <laughs> Huh. Well, you can clearly handle yourself, since you made it back without any problems. And I did warn you about the dangers. Not that I told you to go digging about down there, mind. Anyway, Magdalene, what are you painting on the mural now? I'm working on depicting the revolt, but I think I angered Agnes when I asked her about it. Ah, that's right, you were just a few years old then. God, has it been that long? Don't worry about Agnes. She acts cranky, but she's never truly upset with anyone. It took years for Tassie to recover after that night. Thank God we've come a long way since then. Otto would be proud of what the town has accomplished. I think so too. You know, Magdalene, I think he would be especially proud of you for memorializing Tassie in the mural. You'd be thrilled to think that you'd become part of the family. I'm honoured you think so. Of course, Otz has been charmed by you for years now, and I don't blame him. You're a beautiful young woman. Mom? I'll have to speak with Klaus, of course, but you and Otz are a good match. I'm going to stare awkwardly. Anyway, I don't mean to keep you chatting away with us older folks. Have fun and mer Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Eva. Till... Merry Christmas, Otz. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Mags. It does seem like, you know, they're definitely setting up the romance. Whether it's going to happen, I don't know. But until then, I'm going to keep insulting him. Hey, Veronica. Merry Christmas, Magdalene. Enjoying the celebration? 
Um, um, it's a wonderful to see everyone together in such high spirits. Isn't it? Even Grandpa's enjoying himself. This winter has been difficult for his gout. The cold makes his joints seize. I told him he didn't have to come to the perch and laugh, but he insisted. He was loving it. He was clapping away. I haven't missed one Yule procession in my life, and I'll be goddamned if some snow stops me. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, we know all, ma old man. Anyway, like Jorg said earlier, it's nice to have a night of co good company and cheer. Um, thank you for mentioning my father in your f speech, Jorg. We're glad to know he was missed. You're welcome, Magdalene. Klaus is a good man. We'll miss him as part of the community. To be honest, I didn't expect to make a speech tonight. I just had a thought about what happened in town this year. Really? Werner kept insisting that someone make her speech, so... All said I was the most charismatic of anyone on the council. He said that? Well, he said I would make the least amount of people angry over it. Walter said it was my charisma. Smile awkwardly. <laughs> we'll be honest, I never thought I'd be someone people in Towson listen to. But you've always been part of the town council. We didn't always have a council, though. It wasn't until the night of the revolt, really, that I felt like I could do things on my own, be my own man. I loved my father, but what he did, I thought it had doomed the town. Well, we're lucky he didn't. Yeah, he almost did. He chose to burn the abbey. I always went along with him because he was my dad. You had to be right, that night was the first time I thought any different. I learned that night that you can fight for something right and still choose the wrong way to do it. I swore I'd never let that happen again. Revolt broke down everything I would thought I knew about Tassin. About myself. But I made a lot of things better for Tassin, and that makes me hopeful. What do you mean? Well, our new lord is strict, but he made a deal with us. The council lets us govern ourselves. As much as I was grumbling earlier today, York is right. Life changed in Tassing. Even though the first few years were hard, we're better for it now. No abbot looking down on us making stupid laws as he sees fit. Our lord lives days away. As long as we pay our taxes, we're left alone. It's a better life for Artemis and Apollo than we had. Don't you talk ill of my son, boy. He gave you everything he had, God rest his soul. A cough. <laughs> I know, Grandpa. Um. Well. Choosing to live differently than your dad was brave. I think you and the rest of the town council have done a great job. Thank you, Magdalene. I've done the best I can do right by the town and dad. You're his son. You've done him proud, boy. Thanks, Grandpa. Anyway, I'm going for another pint. Anyone else? Yes, yes, bring a pitcher. You've had enough, Grandpa. Your humours might become unbalanced. Another for me, Jorg. Magdalene? Um, I'll get myself another later, thanks. Alright, well, we'll see you later, then, Magdalene. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. This is a very kind of like, you know, wholesome, um, like, scene that we've got here. Anna? Hello, Magdalene. Happy Christmas to you. Good evening, Magdalene. Merry Christmas to you, too. Ulrich, Andreas, say hello to Mistress Drukran. Hi. Hi. Oh, Andreas, don't be shy. You know Mistress Magdalene. Sorry, Magdalene. He's still a bit quiet. Hmm. Um. Hello, Ulrich. Hello, Andreas. How did you like your speech, Magdalene? Um. It's a bit, a bit simple, I think, but not bad. Aha, uh -huh, that's my fault, I'm afraid. I put poor Yorg up to it. Werner insisted there be a speech. 
but Jorg did it justice. You can always count on him to speak from the heart, especially a few drinks in. Truthfully, I think much of the town needed some encouragement tonight. Tassing hasn't had such a hard season since... Since the revolt. Yes, I'm sorry, it's Christmas. We shouldn't speak of such sad times. Well, let's toast to better days then. Cheers to that. Although there is an old Latin proverb my dad used to say to me. Ignis orim pruit mysteria fortis viros. Fire? I know Ignis is fire. That's probably misery. Viros is life. So... Fire something of something is the misery of life. Fire is the test of gold. Misery is the proof of strong men. Ah, close enough. Yes, precisely. There's no question the revolt left Tassing worse off. But seeing the town now gives me hope. You're an artist, Magdalene. I think you can see it too. Um. Well... I think I do. Things seem brighter for Tassing somehow. Yes, those miserable days gave us the resilience we needed to push ahead, to make things better. The next generation like you or Yuta or the twins, you saw what it was like to fight for ourselves. To stand up to tyranny, even at the cost of losing our homes and lives. To be honest, most nights I'm grateful for the revolt. Really? Oh yes, you wouldn't remember, but life was already terrible before that night. The revolt burned away the dead wood that had rotted Tassing for decades. God knows my father was an evil man. His death released me from years of fear. The revolt gave me the, the courage to face him, to become better than him. I think something of the same happened when the abbey was destroyed. If things had gone on as they always did, well, I doubt we'd be having such a Yule feast tonight. The cost was high, but... It resulted in just as much joy as grief. You really think so? God turns all things for good, even the darkest of nights. Because of the revolt, I could marry Paul, and we could supply grain to peasants at a fair price. Our children will grow up without the fear that ruled over my life as I got older. No moment in life is entirely good or bad, Magdalene. What matters is more. What matters more is how we choose to see it. Um. I don't know. I don't see how my dad's attack could be anything but evil. Keep hope, Magdalene. The Lord helps those who trust in him. Don't forget to take some time to have fun tonight, alright? Mommy, I want another cookie. Shh, don't yell, sweetheart. Excuse us, Magdalene. It seems we have cookies to fetch. Of course, Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas, Magdalene. Alright. Alexander, let's go. Ah, Mistress Magdalene, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Alexander. Merry Christmas, Casimiras. Enjoying the night? Very much so. The cookies especially. I hadn't had such a wonderful gingerbread in ages. Which is setting up to perform. Did you have a particular song in mind you want us to play? Between the two of us, we know all the Christmas songs between here and Spain. Um... I don't know any of these off by heart. How about From Heaven Above to Earth I Come? The one written by Martin Luther. I don't oppose, but are you sure we ought to? I didn't mean to choose the uh, heretical one. Maybe you're right, I'll pick something else. Uh, like Good Christian Men Rejoice. Ah, folk tune, one of Casimiris' favourites. Once Kaz and I play what we prepared, we'll be sure to play that one. Merry Christmas, everyone. Since it's Christmas, Casimiris and I wanted to share a special song with all of you in the spirit of giving. Please enjoy. In dulce jubilo, nun singet und seid froh. Unsers Herzens Wonne liegt in Presepio und leuchtet als die Sonne Matris in Cremio. Alpha es et o, Alpha es. 
Bravo! Well done! Another, another! Wonderful! Simply wonderful! Thank you, thank you, truly! Please return to your drinks, we'll be playing all night! Happy Christmas! Alright, well, I think we're done here. Although we can speak to Big York again? Just double check. It does say we've got something else to do. Big York? Hey Magdalene, sorry to bother you during the feast. Oh, hello, York. Did you need something? Well, all the chatter and the revolt earlier had me thinking. You're nearly done with the mural, aren't you? Last time you talked with the council, you said you were working on the final portion, painting the revolt. I don't mean to nag during the feast, though that's Veronica's job. I should have done it sooner. I've been listening to people around town talk about the revolt so I can get a better idea of how to paint it. Everyone has a different idea of how uh, that night happened. I think I finally settled on how I want to depict it. Yeah? Alright, we got three options. Paint the peasants burning the abbey, the mill, and the land knights defending the monks. I want to show honour what the peasants stood for. I'll show Otto giving a speech and the soldiers in the distance. I'll show the aftermath. Paint the ruined abbey surrounded by everyone who died and their families. I have to choose Otto given the speech. That It just seems like the best of the bad bunch. That's a good perspective. It shows what happened without being too detailed about, well, what happened. Sure, everyone will love it. Klaus will be proud of the design you picked. Eva will like that especially. Anyway, I'll get out of your way. I think you've got better things to do. I think Otz was looking for you too. Haha, <laughs> I'm certain he is. I think I'll actually go home for the night. I've had enough of Ott's flirting and I should check in on my dad. Oh, don't alone hello from all of us, alright? I will. Good night, York. I just had a ver <laughs> Good night, Magdalene. I had a very worrying thought about Ott's. Because Ott's was looking for us and I was like, oh no. That probably means he has bad news or something bad has happened or like, you know, Ott's is dead. I, I, you know, that would that be the typical one. You set Otz up as the romance option, and then you kill him, just as you're like, oh, maybe, we, maybe it's not so bad. Just, you know, we get to in front of our house, and he's just dead. No, 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 no. We don't want to speak to you, Emily. You bring portents of doom and destruction. We do not want to speak to you. Anyway. God bless you and Merry Christmas, Magdalene. Oh, Merry Christmas, Sister Amelie. Were we bothering you with the noise next door? No, not at all. Hearing people celebrating Christ's birth brings me great joy. Christmas tide should be a heartening time of year for all of us. Um, I enjoyed seeing everyone feeling better about the future, especially after all tasking has endured. The people here have suffered greatly, but we must always find hope in the midst of despair. It is fitting to celebrate Christ's birth on days with so little light and warmth. People need Christmas in the depth of winter to remind them that spring will return, and we will all have to uh, we will all have a chance to live again. Magdalene, who is that? That's Andreas. They he had a blonde beard. That's Andreas. Someone who's been following me. Please excuse me, Sister Emily. I need to check my father. Oh, of course. 
God bless you. Thank you, sister. So Andreas has been visiting Klaus, I think. I think Andreas... I think Klaus knows that Andreas is alive and Cl Andreas has been visiting Klaus. Oh. The door is open. Is someone here? Dad? I'm ready. I'm, I've got so much anticipation. It could be anyone. But it's Andreas. Or not? Oh, thank God. Magdalene, is that you? What's the matter? Someone was standing near the house. The door was open. I was afraid something might have happened to you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear anything. I've been asleep most of the day, most of the evening, too. Ugh. I'm worried about you, Magdalene. You're worried about me? You're working too hard. I know taking care of me takes up so much of your time. I know how hard you've been working on a mural. Um, I know how important it is to you. For you to work this hard, it has to be important to you. It is important to me. Ugh. I'm not going to make it, Magdalene. Are you a doctor now? I know Werner Stoltz... I've known Werner Stoltz long enough to know when he's going through the motions. He's never been kind, but there's been a special coldness to him when he's, been atten when he's attending to a dead man. It's alright. This is just life. I'm glad I'm going before you, even if it's sooner than either of us would like. I've already seen too much death in my time. I just wanted to show you what I could do. I wanted you to be proud of me. I have been. Every day of your life. You've never needed to prove anything to me. I wish I could stay to see the mural when you finish it. But I don't need to. I know it'll be more beautiful than anything these old hands have ever made. Don't say that. It's true, though. I mean, I got along all right. I always knew you would surpass me before long. You can already see things that I never could. See things and make them real. I don't know if that's true. It is. Ugh. Whether I die tonight or tomorrow or the next day, I'm not going to be here much longer. One morning you're going to wake up and you'll have to do things for yourself. Love things for yourself and you'll have to share it with the world. Love is the only reason to do anything in this life. Oh, all this talking too much. Could you bring me something to eat? Of course, Dad. You haven't eaten all day. And I've missed the Christmas feast, too. I can't believe no one brought me a cookie. I'll go get some soup. And... That's Andreas! Klaus. I'm sorry, Klaus. About everything. You're here. <gasps> we get to control what he's saying. It is Andreas. <laughs> I think so. These days I feel like my mind has been cracking apart. Sometimes I'm not sure where I am. I've been trying to keep Magdalene safe. I've been trying to figure it out this whole time. After the fire, it's all I could think about. That and them. They've never left me. They're all still there, all in the dance of death. The Baron, Piero, Guy, Berenic, Peter, Otto, August. Now you.
that. Oh god, it's you. Who are you? What are you doing to my father? Magdalene, it's alright. It's alright. I'm sorry, forgot my manners after all these years. You've likely forgot my face or what it once was. Magdalene, this is Andreas Mahler. Back from the dead. The earliest memory I have is of you running into a burning library. I'm sorry. I don't understand. No one could have survived that. Maybe I shouldn't have, but I did. I don't understand, Andreas. Where have you been all these years? Hiding from the world. In the ruins, mostly. Sometimes in the woods when it was warm. Stealing bread from Gret. Stealing books from you. Oh, so I wasn't going crazy. It's the only thing that kept my mind from forgetting what words are. Wait, how did you survive the fire? With some difficulty. I grabbed as many books as I could and threw them into the scriptorium. When the smoke got too thick, I started to black out. The next thing I remember was Caspar pulling me into the crypt. What? Okay, so there was a decision that happened right at the end, right? Like right at, before you went to the to the uh, abbey to to do all the confrontation, and the decision was whether Caspar went with you. If you were nice to Caspar, he went with you. If you were mean to Caspar, he didn't. If Caspar didn't go with you, does he not pull Andreas from the crypt? And does that mean that Andreas isn't here? Or does it mean that somebody else pulls Andreas from the crypt and somebody else knows part of the secret? It's crazy. Your apprentice, the boy. You sent him back to Salzburg. He didn't leave. He waited in the woods and watched what was happening. When he saw me in the window of the library, he ran through the crypt to save me. And he did. But he saw that I was trying to save the books and... He went back in. I couldn't stop him, I was barely conscious. He never came back out, Klaus. When I woke up, everyone was dead or gone. I couldn't face any of you. I couldn't go back to Sabine, that empty house. So I hid. You painted over the dance of death in the abbey. It turns out I had a reason to keep painting. I'm sorry if I scared you. No one's come to the abbey for years. I thought I was safe there. I was afraid to talk to you, afraid to talk to anyone. Alright, time for the question. Did you leave us those notes, the ones with the purple writing? And I wanted to see Andreas' eyes go wide. Ah. No, those were written by a different occult hand. One that does not want you to finish your mural. One that has killed and may kill again to stop you from telling Tassing's history. Tassing's history? Why? Because Tassing's real history is at odds with the story we've all been told been covered bit by bit, layer by layer, until it could no longer be seen. But it's still here. It's always been here, hidden beneath our feet. And it's still protected, haunted by the spectre of death that has hung over this place for generations. The Thread Pooler. The Thread Pooler, beneath our feet? What are you talking about? The person who attacked your father is the same person who manipulated someone into killing Otto Zimmerman. A Lorenz Rothvogel. Yes, and they travel through the Roman aqueduct that connects Tassing and Kiersau. Okay, 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 okay. They travel between the aqueduct that connects Tassing and Kiersau. They've been here a long time. I'm just working out who it could possibly be. There's only one person it can be, right? It has to be Sister Matilda, right? 
I'm just thinking in terms of people it could be. Because the figure we saw was slender, right? The one that was running across the aqueducts. That figure was running to the convent. So we think it must be somebody who's in the convent. If the notes are still happening, they still have to be out. You know, they still have to be outside, right? They, they still have to be in the convent and be able to access the, the outside world. They can do that through the kitchen. So the only people who are still there back from that time are Gertrude and Matilda. Gertrude, it can't be her. So it has to be Matilda. Unless it's somebody going the other direction. If someone's going the other direction, who could it be? Realistically, the only person which is connected to everything who it could possibly be... I don't know. Like, the only person I can come up with was either Andreas, which is flimsy at best, or Ill Peter, who is too, well, ill to do it. But... The reason I say Ill Peter is because he would be there for generations. He's older. He has the age thing. It could be Agnes, potentially, because we've heard Agnes is older. Like, they keep mentioning that. She's been here for a while, but it, 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 she doesn't fit as well. Like, maybe she fits because she was the wife of Lucky, but uh, I don't know. That doesn't fit quite right. Nothing quite fits right. I'm trying to think who else it could be. Werner? Maybe? Werner could potentially have the writing talent to write in that hand. But would he really? I don't know. He doesn't seem like the type. It's, I was kind of thinking Smokey? No. Vaxlav? No. Just going through people in my head. Father Thomas? No. Well, the only other person it could be is Amelie. If she can get out the window. That's the question. If Amelie can get out, she's a prime suspect. Anyway, Andreas, tell us. It's a network of tunnels I've become quite familiar with. And I've seen the ghost that haunts them, that can squeeze through the tiniest opening. I've seen it bend itself in half to reach places I could never follow. I travelled along every inch of the aqueduct, the old city, but there is one place I have never found. The lair where the thread puller retreats to, the ancient Roman temple that it is determined to hide from view. The myth... The Mithrium, you found it. No, but I mapped out a darkness between the collapsed tunnels. I believe I know how to get there. Come with me, I'll show you. Uh, Dad? He's a good man, Magdalene. You'll be safe with him. Will you be alright? Yes, I'll be fine. Protect my daughter, Andreas. With my life, Klaus. I promise. Alright, let's find the Mithrium. Ho 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 ho. A look beneath the rat house. The rat house? What are we doing here? When the men dug the foundation, they found Roman ruins that had been buried over time. Lucky never wasted stone, so he used the Roman wall as one of the cellars. Oh, as one of the cellars. <laughs> there's a way in uh, there's a way inside. To the hidden place. Are you alright? Yes. Alright, into the Rathskeller. We're still playing as uh, Magdalene. I like Andreas' little, uh, you know, walk. It's quite similar to Adok, and actually quite similar to Piero as well. Interesting. Andreas is alive, that's it's crazy. Okay. Alright, that wall is different. Does that mean this is the place? No, it's two-sided, new and old. It was above ground once, it carried water. Look. Alright, I think I can make it out. Cornelius goes to the bath today and completes the sixth step in the Mithrium. Yes, you see? No, there were cults of Mithras all over the Roman Empire. We know there was a Mithrium in Tassing, but this is just some graffito from an initiate. How does this help us? Well, here.
What is wrong with you? Huh? Oh well, many things probably, physically and mentally. No time to talk about that now though. This is the aqueduct. Yes, and? We'll take us to the baths, then to the mithril. All right. After you, please. You don't want to light the light before you... No, we'll do it while we're in there. Okay. Part 8. Manu Profia. Keep up, Andreas. He's looking remarkably well for somebody who's been living in some ruins for 20 years. This part of the tunnel has collapsed. We're not getting to the Mithrium this way. I think... Yes, Casper and I found a collapsed section of the aqueduct near town. We didn't find out what was on the other side. I wouldn't let him explore it. Ah, <sighs> I should have taken more care with him. Oh, oh no! Now we're doing barbs against Andreas? Oh, no, no. Whenever you're done feeling guilty, we can get on with this. Yes, of course. I just love how Andreas has just accepted to his role in life. And now Magdalene is the leader. It's it's perfect. Bathhouse. He's just like, yes, of course. You're right. I am useless. The decoration. These must have been the baths. It doesn't look like there's a way through. Silt. All the floods kept carrying it down here. Hundreds of years of floods. What if we can't get through? What if it's buried forever? It's too early to get this discouraged. Let's keep looking. Well. <laughs> I've looked everywhere. What about this way? Okay, I see. Or stairs down? Would something be below the baths? A hippocost. They use warm air to heat the rooms above. Roman colonies in the north often had them. Let's hope these haven't been filled with silt as well. Do you know where we're going? These pillars just kind of go on in all directions. Andreas, could you look that way? I think I'm going to try exploring ahead. Of course. Oh, now we're Andreas. Oh, I see. Andreas is time to shine. Oh, no. How could you abandon your work, Andreas? I thought you were a true artist, a master of your craft. I need to be quicker reading those. But now we get to see Andreas' mind failing him. The only thing more pitiful than watching your work in that scriptorium was your love of that dying art. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Voices in his head. An eye for an eye, Andreas. You may have condemned me, but in doing so, you damned yourself as well. Get out of here, guy. Oh no. If that was guy, then the next one has to be... Oh no. Aiden, this isn't going to be good. Master, why did you send me back into the flames? I told you that one wasn't going to be good. Who's next? No one's next. It's time to go on. No, no, this isn't right. Is that Baron Rothvogel? And Melancholia? I can't be here right now. How did I get here? Andreas. You're still here. Yes, for a little longer. You're leaving? I'm the last vestige of reason that once ruled this court. When it goes, I will go with it. But who will rule the city if you leave? No one. You must leave this place forever, Andreas. 
You must abandon it for good. But how? What can I do? I don't even now know how I got here. This was once a place of refuge for you, Andreas. It has become a prison, a prison you have constructed to protect yourself. From what? From pain, from risk, from life itself. I can't stay here. I have to help Magdalene. How do I get out? Andreas, you are the architect. I will help you best I can, but you are the only one who can answer that. Oh, okay. I see it's a, it's a maze. I can do mazes. Oh, no. Hello, Andreas. Is that you, Sabine? Yes, of course. I'm still here. Arsme will always be here with you. We haven't talked in so long. Why? You reminded me of August. Remind me. It wasn't all bad, Andreas. We lost him, but we had four years together. They were happy years, weren't they? It's hard to remember. This great black pain bolts out all of the joy. I know. It was hard for both of us. I don't blame you for anything. You should stop blaming yourself. It may be too late for us, but it's not too late for you, Andreas. It's not too late for Magdalene. Yes, Magdalene. I have to help her. You can, Andreas, but you have to leave this place behind for good. I know I can. I will. You will. Thank you, Sabine. Will I ever see you again? Not in this place. And maybe someday in a better place. In a better dream. Okay. Uh, this way, down here, this way, and then this way, then down here, then this way. You think I've done it? Oh no, Caspar. Master Andreas! Oh. Caspar. It's really you. It's so good to see you again, Master. How can you say that? You died because of me. I just wanted to help you, Master Andreas. You couldn't think straight. You shouldn't blame yourself for it anymore. I let my family down. I let you down. I couldn't stop Peter. I couldn't save Tassing. I couldn't even save more than a couple armful of books. You did what you could, Master. Everyone knows you did. That's all any of us can do. All right, Caspar. Thank you. Thank you for everything you taught me. It doesn't feel great that we traded Caspar for a couple of books. Or a handful of books. Wait, what happened? This, th th this was the way out. Before I started talking to Caspar, I know this was the way out. Your mind is fighting itself, Andreas. It remembers the pain of life. It's trying to protect you from it. Beatrice. Yes? I thought you were gone. You brought me back. Oh. So what do I do now? Keep going. Alright, so it's back this way. I see the exits on the other side now. Through here, all the way up. Down this way, across, down, through, round, this way. Then this way. Oh, hello, August. You too. It's been so many nights, so many years without seeing your face. I thought I had forgotten. I knew you were still here, though. Quietly waiting for me. I can't change the past, can't cover it up. It's always there under the surface, no matter how I try to bury it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. I. It's alright. He spoke. What? It's alright, Daddy. It is. You don't have to hide here anymore. But what about you and Caspar? And your mother? We're not really here. And there are people who need you. It's so hard to let you go. I know, Daddy. But you have to. I know. 
You're right. Thank you. I love you, Daddy. I love you too. Good night, August. Good night. We're, we're having the what would be described as the opposite of a mental breakdown here. We're having like a mental build-up. They shifted again, the walls. It's still trying to protect you. No. It's not? No, I mean, no, I don't have to do this. This is my mind, my maze. And I'm leaving. Good. But this next part might be confusing. Oh. That is confusing. What? I don't understand. I understand any of this. Did I make this? You borrowed it. From where? From what? There are layers to everything, even our own memories. Over time, the foundations become buried. We can no longer recall how we got here, no longer recall what came before. And what came before? Our Lady, watching over the labyrinth as I watch over you. And even this has its roots that reach deep into the past. It was not always a lady to watch over the labyrinth, but there was a labyrinth. Oh. Emily. It's Emily. What? I don't understand. Sister Emily. Is this real? Am I still in my mind? You are here with me, and we are here in spirit. Are we still in the ruins? We are in the tabernacle, the heart of the labyrinth. Your spirit was wandering and the Lord brought you here. But I don't understand, how did you leave your cell? I have not. We are only here in spirit, Andreas. Um, am I having a vision? I know it is confusing. I am not even sure of my own visions. But if you are here with me, it is the will of the Lord. Andreas! Sister Amelie! What are you doing here, sister? This is the center of the labyrinth, the tabernacle. This, it is where the Lord sends my spirit to do his will. He has also guided your spirits here. There must be a purpose to it. Um. No, this isn't my spirit. I walked here through the aqueduct. We're Magdalene. Magdalene's gonna have no part in your crazy tales. You're confused, Magdalene. It's understandable. My own visions have perplexed me for all of my life. Even though this seems strange, even though it is a place of spirit, it is very real. The Lord has called me to this place for many years. He, al he has always made his will known to me. Soon he will make it known to you. Sister, how does your spirit come to, uh, come to this place? Through the door between life and death. When my spirit hears the call, it descends through my grave. The grave she's digging. She dug a great, a grave. Is that what's in the top right there? She dug her grave. The grave literally leads into the ruins. And then that's how she gets everywhere. Wow. Here the Lord tells me what messages I must bear and to whom. You deliver messages? Yes. Once, long ago, I was a scribe. I copied many works of the great church doctors. Origen, in particular. But that all ended with the fire. It ended with my... It ended with my life. Wait. I thought I'd given up the pen forever, until the visions returned. No. When the fire took my abbey, I couldn't save my sisters, not one. All I could grab was a single book and a bolt of cloth. I couldn't understand why God had spared me alone. But he showed me. God had a higher purpose for me, for my hand. Father Thomas explained it to me. He makes everything clear. Father Thomas was the mastermind and he was using Amelie to 
set up all these murders? That's... Uh, that's crazy. He tells me what I must do, what the Lord wills me to do. It was you, this whole time you wrote the notes. I found one by my dad when he was attacked. Sister Amelie, you pushed those people into committing murder. What? No, no, that can't be true. The Lord would not use me for such a purpose. Um... Let's see, we're, we're Magdalene? Magdalene says, I said it, says it as it is, but that's what happened, sister. You wrote those notes. And people were murdered because of them. No, I wouldn't. He wouldn't. There was nothing in his messages about murder. No, 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 no. I'm not here. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Ha ha. <laughs> the way he jauntily walks in. Ah, Sister Amelie. Shush. It's all right. Father Thomas, how did you get down here? Tassing is an old place. It's buried many ancient roads and tunnels over the centuries. People walk above the hidden ways every day without even knowing it. Though in truth it was Sister Amelie who rediscovered them first and found this place. Father Thomas, did you? In other circumstances, I would be overjoyed to see you, Andreas. In truth, I am still happy you are alive. Thank God. But I think the occasion of this reunion leaves little to rejoice about. You. You and Sister Amelie were behind all of the murders? No, she had no part in this. But the notes, she wrote them. She did, but she did not understand their purpose. I guided her. I told her what to write. To what end? What was the point of all this? Look around you. What do you see? Paintings of Roman gods. Mars and Diana. Look closer. It looks like the statue of St. Moritz from the meadow. And there's images of St. Satya from the shrine. I don't understand. Well, obviously they're the two gods. It's St. Moritz and St. Satya, and Mars and Diana. The saints are the gods? When the Romans left Tassing, their buildings, their temples, their statues remained. Christians settled here centuries later. They found time-worn fragments of that imperial grasp. The statue of Mars Patter that once watched over the Roman field stood there headless and nameless. The settlers believed it was St. Moritz who had was already a legend where they had come from. They found the shrines to Satya, not understanding she was an aspect to Diana, believed she was another local saint. It's not uncommon for stories to borrow and change characters from older tales. But these are not stories, Magdalene. These are saints. Our saints. The settlers did not see them through pagan Roman eyes, but through Christian eyes. No one knew they were Roman gods because there was no account of what the Romans did and left here. Except for Historia uh, Tasse. But Historia Tasse was not known then. Perhaps it had not even been written then. Who knows how long that book had been lost before it made its way to Father Matthias. And you killed him for it? Yes, with poison. Oh, we're getting details. No one suspected. Wait, what? You killed someone? Thank God forgive me. Yes, I did. When Father Matthias learned that there was no evidence that St. Moritz had ever come to Tassin, that the shrine to him in the meadow was a statue of Mars that the Romans had erected hundreds of years ago, that St. Satya was the Roman goddess Diana, you resolved to deal with it. And you resolved to deal with him. Andreas, our people believe in St. Moritz. They believe in the miracles God has worked through his hand. And they believe in the legend of St. Satya, that she helped Moritz and watched his over Tassin still. 
And was that worth killing the abbot? I believed it was then, yes. If St. Moritz never came to Tassin, what is in the reliqu reliquary? What are the pilgrims coming to see? What does it mean for the people who prayed to him, to St. Satya, and believed their prayers were answered? What does it mean for the church that has given people hope, fixed like a false star in a dark sky? If the people have reason to doubt the validity of the star of the saints, can they doubt the church? Can they doubt the gospel, the word of God? Um. Ooh, let's see what we're going to say. Perhaps some would, but you've always told us that we have to accept Christ in our own fr of our own free will. Yes, of course. But preserving the legends of our saints doesn't interfere with individual volition. You're pre uh, preserving a lie. I preserved a lie to illuminate greater truth. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. If you believe this. If you truly believe this. Eternal life is yours. The saints had walked among us. And their relics work miracles. They hear our prayers and answer them. And the two that protect this town were never here. They don't need to know that, Andreas. <sighs> there are times when God feels so far away from us in these mountains. A peasant in Tassin can stand in a field, look over our valley and say, St. Moritz was here. God was with us and he is with us still. And he will all, and he will be with us always. And that's the truth, even if the legend of St. Moritz is a lie. And you think that justifies all of this? In the end, no, but at each step I thought it was right. I was wrong. I know this is hard to believe, but I was trying to save lives to prevent death. But one murder didn't solve the problem, did it? Because one day, Baron Rothfogel rode into town with another copy of Historia Tassi. A copy he promised to give to the abbot so Kyrsau could come to terms with its past. And if Father Gerdnot read its contents, you would be facing the same danger you saw in Father Matthias. In retrospect, given how Father Gerdnot chose to run the abbey, my fears may not have been unfound- may have been unfounded. That sentiment didn't prevent you from doing it again. You're right, it didn't. Is he going to tell us who actually killed him? But then why Otto? Oh, he's, they're not going to tell us who specifically did the murder. Oh, that's so good. The reason I like that is because that preserves a second playthrough for people. Because it's like, hey, if he doesn't tell you exactly who did it, even though you know the mastermind behind the whole plot, you don't know the individual parts, and that still matters, because although he's manipulated people into doing it, why they did it is still very important, because they did do it. Like, if Ferenic killed, um, like, if he killed Baron Rothfogel, then, like, th uh, that is on Ferenic. Whether he had a note which triggered it or not, it's on him, right? Like, to a degree. Like, obviously, there's shared blame, but a lot of the blame lies with him. Anyway. But then why Otto? Certainly, he didn't have anything to do with Historia Tasse. He couldn't even read. In the end, his murder provoked Peter and the others into destroying the abbey. I never thought that would happen. Underestimated Peter's anger and the peasant's frustration. Um, you seem to have a difficult time reading people, Father. It appears that way, yes. He was trying to prevent Otto from showing people what he found. What he found when he was helping to dig the foundation of the rat house. Th in here? This is what he killed him for? Um, The walls of the aqueduct? No, oh, everyone knows about the old aqueducts. That wouldn't cause alarm. What he found was a stone head. The missing head of the statue in the meadow. The statue at the shri shrine of St. Moritz. How did it wind up over there? The most likely culprits are rain, floods, and time. 
Black Till told me that farmers find old tools and pottery in the fields every day. Yes, and this head remained hidden for centuries. It sat in the soil until Otto found it. And he was going to show it, uh, show everyone that God had favoured the town with his discovery. What Otto could not know is that our shrine statue was not of St. Moritz. Because Otto can't read. He didn't know that it said Mars instead of St. Moritz. So he's like, ah, oh, I found St. Moritz's head. Everyone's going to be so stoked. Ah, uh, <laughs> so it was just a complete coincidence, everything else. Because Otto could not read the words chiseled across the head, Mars patter. That the man he entrusted with this information, the town priest, could. Yes. And he told him to meet you on St. John's Eve at the Rat House. I could not let him destroy our town's beliefs. And you had poor Sister Amelie write down what you told her were visions, visions she couldn't remember. And deliver them in the dead of night to Guy, to Hannah, to Martin. So that one of them would murder Otto just as someone murdered Lorenz. What about my father? I also just realized something. Father Thomas doesn't know who killed these people. Because Father Thomas did kind of like a shotgun approach to getting someone to kill him. He, he just put out, you know, a you should kill him message just in general to everybody. And then just kind of let things go. You, you just waited to see what happened. So although somebody did kill Otto, he doesn't know who it was. He just knows that somebody was going to because he'd put enough out there that they had a reason to kill him. Anyway, what about my father? I'm sorry, Magdalene. Why did you do it? It doesn't make any sense. Was it because of the mural? Yes. Klaus persuaded the... Uh, pursued the project with the determination of a guilty man doing penance. He kept digging and digging for answers about Tassin's past, Kearsau's past. I was afraid that sooner or later he would find out about Moritz, Satya, this place, everything. So you tried to kill him? No, I tried to scare him. First with the note, but he ignored it. I thought if I ransacked the, wor uh, the workshop it would scare him off. I... I didn't expect him to come down so quickly. It was just an accident. It wasn't an accident. You almost killed him. I know. So what are you going to do now? Kill me? Kill Magdalene? No, of course not. I've neither the means nor the will to do so. But even, uh, But even if I can't stop you from telling people what I've done, I can stop them from finding this place. Oh... What are you doing? I'm burying the past. Even if it destroys the church above us, I'll make sure no one ever sees this place. Father, you're going to kill us all. You're going to kill Amelie. Then leave and take her with you. You can tell the townsfolk what you want, but if you stay here, we'll die together. You'd really kill yourself and destroy the church just to hide this secret. Churches can be rebuilt more easily than faith. I'm willing to pay the price for that. Oh no. Father. Go. Grab the head, Andreas. Grab the head. Don't forget the head. Okay, never mind. Really wish you'd grab the head, though. Are you alright? I think so, you? In truth, no, but I survived. So did she. They must have heard that at the Golden Hand. What an awful way to end a beautiful Christmas night. What are we going to tell them? What do you mean? About this. About everything. Magdalene, 100%. Why wouldn't we just tell them the truth? For the same reason Father Thomas hid it. Okay. 
You can't be serious. I know I'm not of a healthy mind, but just listen to me. What good will it do to tell everyone about St. Moritz and St. Satya? Maybe, maybe Father Thomas was right about that, if nothing else. Maybe it would break their faith. Okay. So this is interesting, because I've been thinking throughout this game that it, the fact that everybody has such a strong faith in the Lord is kind of a good thing for the town, right? It's a... Um, it's a backbone of the town. It's something that the, everybody has in common, everybody supports. It's a cause that everybody can work towards. It kind of binds the town together. If we take that away, that's going to cause problems. But... What I will say is that Il Peter has shown with Ottilia that the old traditions have power. Like the people who are fault, there are people who are following them. The per uh, the Perchin Lal festival definitely an old tradition. There's a lot of old traditions that can fit in there, and there's probably, you know, enough people who would still follow the faith even if they know that some bits of it are incorrect. I don't know. It's interesting. But, we 100%, Magdalene, the way we've been playing her, Magdalene would 100% tell everyone the truth. If only to let everybody know that she's right. She would tell every single person the truth to be like, you thought that was true? I'm sorry. You're wrong. This is what's happened, and I'm right. I think that's what Magdalene's going to do. So I think he's wrong. I think the people here have enough faith to hear the truth. You know them better than I do. Um, probably, yeah, 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 I suppose. Fair enough. Especially since I've been away for so long. You came back after all this time to solve this, but... It's hard to feel like we actually accomplished anything. Are we any better off than we were this morning? Father Thomas won't be able to hurt anyone else. Maybe he never would have. Hmm. I think you're right. We should tell them. About the saints, the Romans, all of it. Um, I hate that doing the right thing feels so awful. I'm sorry. I am too. But I still think that's where uh, that's what we need to do. Then we'll tell them. Good. We should get Sister Amelie someplace warm. We can take her to my house. You'll probably have some explaining to do. Hmm, a lot, I think. It's been a long time coming. I'm glad you didn't die in that fire. I am too. I think. Merry Christmas, Andreas. Merry Christmas. Oh, Magdalene, you made it back. Andreas and Sister Amelie and I all made it back. Sister Amelie? Was she in the church? I heard a terrible din and the house shook. Is everything alright? Hmm. Um, our neighbours probably think the world is ending, so it could be better. Uh, are you alright, Dad? Yes, uh, I'm sorry. Just tired. Sit by me, tell me what happened. I think Andreas might still be a little crazy, Dad. He swung a mattock right past my head with no warning. No, let's just say, I'm pretty sure he sees things sometimes. Heh <laughs> heh. So we went into the aqueduct. The section we found must have been closed off for centuries. We found an old Roman bathhouse. We couldn't go through, so we found our way down to a level under the baths. I think Andrea said it was a uh, hypocost. Um, I got separated from Andreas. I was really afraid that I'd lost him, that we'd both gotten lost down there. 
Then I heard his voice off in the distance, and I was so relieved. Dad? Are you still listening? Four months later. I know it's hard. I mean, I can only imagine how hard it is. But we will do we will all do our best to make you feel welcome when you get here. It's strange to think this will probably be the last letter I send to you. So I'll end it with my love. Esther. Magdalene? Part 9. Insipid. Yes? I am sorry to disturb you, but I wanted to let you know that everything is in order. Baltus has ensured that all the financial matters will be handled. The money will be forwarded to you via the Reich's post as soon as everything is settled. I appreciate it. Please thank him for me. And don't let him forget his commission for the work. As a representative of his bank, it would be remiss of me to do so. Hmm. I did not know your father well, but I know that he was a well he was well regarded by everyone who spoke of him. It seems that Tassing has lost many things in one man. I am very sorry. Thank you. Good fortune to you. So we're leaving Tassing? This is the end? We got a lot of people to speak to. I'll think of something to use this for later. Okay. Hello. Are you sure you have everything you need, Magdalene? Um. I think so, thank you. I made you something to take with you on the road. It's, um, chamomile, cinnamon, and wheat flour. If you're traveling and you're having cramps... I know, I'll use it. Well, Hildegard's recipe just called for chamomile and wheat flour. I added the cinnamon for taste. Hmm. I'm so sorry about what happened to your father. Thank you. Mother Francisca had us all say prayers for him. And for you as well, when she heard you were leaving. I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. Just keep us in your prayers from time to time. I'll all miss you so much, Magdalene. I'll miss you too. God bless you. Safe travels. Veronica? Magdalene, I can't believe you're really leaving. Um, you should come visit me. Ha! Huh. The farthest I've been is Mittenwald Market, and I don't think that's very likely. Mittenwald, a small municipality known for its transalpine routes between Osberg, Innsbruck, and Milan. Massive amounts of coin and trade pass through Mittenwald each year. Write to us, though. We want to hear about your new life. I'll try. You're a special girl, Mag Magdalene Druckerin. Understand why you're leaving. God knows you have a good cause. But Tassing won't be the same without you. Safe travels and God bless you. Okay, we're stuck going this way. I was going to try and leave Ots till last. Maybe I am. Oh, we got a new father, Elias. Let's walk straight past Ots. Oh, that's, that, that's cold. Elias? 
Good morning, Mistress Drukarin. Are you off so soon? Are you off soon? Yes, Father. Just saying my last few farewells. Of course. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to know you or your father. God rest his soul. I am too. Don't let those bohemians put any heretical ideas in your head. Once their pernicious seeds take root, they can choke the faith right out of you. St. Moritz will protect me. Indeed. Though you travel far from home, he will hear your prayers wherever you go. God bless you, Father Elias. God bless you in your travels. Amelie? God bless you as well, Sister Amelie. Are you leaving today? I am. I'm just heading up to the mill in a bit. I'm so sorry for everything that happened. Well, that was winter. It's spring now. True. Must all try to live again. Hmm. Thank you for helping me. Do you know what you'll do now? Will you become an anchoress again? I don't know, honestly. Father Elias is trying to help me, but... I need to learn to rely on my own judgement a little more. It's going to take a long time to atone for my part in what happened. Perhaps the rest of my life. You were tricked. We all were. Even so, I must make amends. I'm writing an account of what happened here. As well as I can remember it anyway. If it is not enough to earn forgiveness, I pray that it will at least illuminate this history of great darkness. Good, it's worth remembering. God bless you, Sister Emily. God bless and keep you safe in your travels, Magdalene. Alright, Otz. Time to say goodbye. Oh, uh, hey, Mags. We're gonna call him Otz. Otz? I'm really sorry about your dad. He was always nice to me. My mom says he was a good man. She's right. Well, thanks. I should get going. Mags. Magdalene. You sure you don't want to marry me? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just reading this one. I'd rather have my chest crushed under Paul's heaviest millstone. And the load of bitter sor sorrow lies heavy upon my breast. I'm sure, no. It's a little late for that, don't you think? You know what we're going to say? We're going to change it. We're going to not do the last uh, bar. We're going to say it's a tempting offer. Come with me. What? Really? Yes, really. But my mum, until... I'm leaving Tassing today. If you want to have a life together, come with me. Aye, that's a lot to ask. I know, you're asking a lot of me too. Think about it, but don't think too long. Write to me then. It's only spring. I promise I won't get married before the end of the year. Oh, you know I'm no good at writing. Then get better. Don't take too long, sweet boy. My girl can't wait forever. I won't. Good. Take care of your mother. I, I will. Until later, Ots. Uh-huh. Cool. Okay. To the mill. Else? Goodbye. Magdalene, dear, I wish you'd stay with us. Little Andreas and Ulrich will miss you greatly. I'll miss them also. Hassing is not the place for me. It's past time to leave. You'll find your happiness out there yet, somewhere beyond the hills and valleys. I know it in my heart. God looks after you, as he does for, all, um, for us all. None of us can truly know what lies ahead on the road. God knows. Maybe one day you'll come to visit us again, with your own family in tow. If that is the case, I'll make sure to send you a letter ahead of time. 
Of course, do right. I sometimes still think of all the lives and places out there. When I was younger, I often dreamed of traveling, visiting the many kingdoms. But I found my place, here and now, in Tassing, even after all that happened. With the revolt? Yes, and Lantart. It was a frightening time, not only to me, but to Paul and to Anna. It's probably what brought them together in the end, a miracle. My little darlings, without them I'd never have little Andreas and Ulrich. Ah, I am rambling. Stay safe on the road, Magdalene, dear. We're still in dangerous times. I will. Godspeed, Mag Magdalene. Oh, see you, Paul and Anna. It would be nice to say goodbye, but I can't. Is that Andreas? Since he's had a haircut? <laughs> Andreas. I almost think you should have kept the beard. Just checking if there's anyone else over here. Nope. <laughs> Andreas, it's time to go. Are you sure I look alright? Of course, Andreas, you look perfectly respectable. You're a little worse for wear, but a good sight better than you were. It was kind of the women to help me uh, to help clean me up. I'm afraid I've forgotten how to look after myself. Some would say you took cap care of yourself quite admirably. How many men could have survived in the burned out cellar in the best part for the best part of 20 years? Subsisting on a discarded rye, no less. I'm sorry about that. Andreas, we already told you it's all it's all right now. Magdalene. Hello, Magdalene. Are you off soon? Hello, yes, I'm riding with your flower to Mittenwald, then down the Isar. I'm sorry to see you go, Magdalene. I hope Prague is everything you've dreamed of. If it's half the city, uh, city Esther describes, I'm sure I'll love it. It was a wonder the last time I saw it. Andreas can't resist just one last... Well, when I was on my travels, I went to Prague. Anyway... You have a chance to make a life of your own out there, of your own there. God knows I've squandered so much of mine. Use the time you have and use it well. I will. I don't know how, but I will. I wish he could have seen it, Andreas. I know. He would have loved it. I hope so. Magdalene, if angels carried him down to bear witness, the heavenly host would have wept at it. Now I know you're just trying to make me feel better. He was always proud of you, and he would be still. Magdalene, I wanted to ask you something about the mural before you go. Hmm? I thought it was supposed to cover the whole wall. Why did you leave a section blank? For the future. Unless history is going to stop in tassing the moment I roll down the road. Hmm. I think your wagon is about to leave. Oh, it is. It hardly feels like enough time. Hmm. Thank you for everything you did for me, for my family. God bless you, Andreas Maller. Andreas? Are you alright? I'm lost. That's alright. You're welcome to stay with us for as long as you need. Besides, you can't leave yet. The children require your expertise. Oh? They're up on the mill, the walkway. I'll have supper ready when you're done. Just remember that you're always welcome in our home, Andreas. Thank you. How were Andreas? Andreas who doesn't run anymore. I want to check something because I didn't do it previously with Andreas. Ah, nothing. <laughs> I was wondering whether the character sheet was going to have updated Andreas. It does not. Okay. Still got my hat.
And there's our mural. The story of the wolf. The Abbey's founding, so this would be the uh, patron of the Abbey. And also preaching to the people. The soldiers in the background heading to the mill. And then at last, the true story of Tassig, who Saint Satya and Saint Moritz were, Mars and Diana. Okay, Otto Zimmerman, Magdalene Druckerin, to Prague. Oh, that's Ott! That's Ott, my Otto Zimmerman, that's Ott married Magdalene Druckerin. And then these are the different families of um, the town. So Martha joined the, um, joined the nunnery. Il Peter is still alive, or is still going, at least when they did that one. Apollo had a son Gert, um, called uh, Peter. Ursula married the new uh, father. Vaxlav was burned at the stake. Kraft married Yuta. Sorry, Vaxlav, for having about the worst ending that you could imagine. Simon Bauer never married. Kraft Bauer never married. Another Simon Bauer never married. On this side, Endris had plenty of children, more than enough children, more than his fair share, you might say. And the shrine of St. Moritz went untended. Andreas Muller was also in the town. And with that, we have finished Pentiment. The, my opinion of the game went so, swung so much. At the start, I was loving the murder mystery. As it went into the it, as an, when we went into the second mystery, got even more drawn into like the potential for a greater conspiracy. It was a really odd pacing decision to drop you into Magdalene. But I can see why they did it, right? They deliberately dropped you in there to make you feel uncomfortable. They were like, something's not right here. This isn't what, like, you know, this is all 
unrelated to what was happening. This is all just a side story, right? But I think they deliberately did that so that when you suddenly got, when you went back to the Abbey, you got just that little bit of, wait a second, wait a second, there's something more. What you'd been discovering was linking in to the overall story. I wonder how early you can find that out. In theory, you are able to get the Historia Tassia back early, or at least find it earlier. Because if you could find Martin Bauer, you could find it earlier. Maybe it's impossible to find Martin Bauer in the first section. That's the other option. Yeah. And also, I love the way with Father Thomas at the end. They did the thing where it didn't tell you who killed the other ones. And actually, I get the feeling that there's going to be nothing in this game that's going to tell you specifically who killed someone else, right? There's going to be no definitive proof about anybody killing anybody else in the game. Which I think is just, like, that's such a weird decision, but I like it. I like it a lot, because you're expecting there to be a perfect outcome, and there just isn't. A game that this gets compared to a lot, right, is uh, Disco Elysium. And they've deliberately, when they announced the game and then when they were talking about it, they, they tried to push that away a little bit, say it's not like that. But, minor Disco Elysium spoilers here. In Disco Elysium, there is a, there is a correct answer, right? There is one correct answer in that game. And you can find that correct answer. And that means that when you play it again, you're less looking for a correct answer and you're more looking for, like, backstory and other stuff around the place. I could definitely see you playing this game again. One, to find out more information that is missed throughout the story. Like, what could you have known earlier? What would a different type of Andreas have found? What would an Andreas who people didn't like, what, what would he have found? But also, what effect things had. Like, if you played Andreas in this first section in a very, um, like, abrasive way, you only hung out with the nobles, you know, you're going to get a very different outcome, I think, as you move through the story. You're going to get less of a public love for Andreas. I think that could be interesting. And if you played Magdalene differently, I'm wondering if you if you keep saying, like, you know, I want to stay in the town. If every one of your options is, I want to stay in the town, maybe you don't go to Prague. Maybe because maybe there's some hidden thing in the background which is counting, you know, number of times you say you're going to go versus number of times you say you're going to stay, or something like that. Maybe if you choose to keep the story of the saints there, you stay. Like, maybe something happens. Maybe you can end up with Magdalene marrying someone else in town. You know, who knows, right? There's a whole bunch of different routes you can take. Like, maybe... If Caspar doesn't join Andreas, Caspar can be alive in the final section, right? But as a different role. It, it, there's all these different stacking things on top of each other where you want to see the different outcomes to know how different things react, but all to give you like little bits of insight on the rest of the story. I really liked it. Yeah. I'm trying to think... like. The only thing I would be wanting in this game to improve, I mean, apart from being able to use the, um, what's it called? To, to use the uh, people menu, but that's just a bug. They'll fix that at some point. They probably already have fixed it. I just never checked. Uh, but apart from that, um, like, I don't know, just like a quicker way of getting around town or a quicker way, maybe if on a second playthrough. That'd be useful to know on a second playthrough if it would tell you, I already know this information. You see this in visual novels occasionally, right? Also, I like the sites and the sources bit here. But in vis visual novels, uh, you'll get like a... When you go for a different route, it will say, you've already seen this scene, right? You've already seen this conversation, skip it. Like a little question mark. And then you can just press a button and it will just skip you to the end of that. And then you only see new things. That, I think, could be cool. Also, oh, yeah, th thank you for making the game, obviously. Not thank you for playing, but um, oh, also the um, the murals in the background. That's really cool. But what I think could be really cool is if they had a um, I think I'm trying to think of the right way to put the game for it. A Detroit Become Human style uh, map. I think that's the one I've seen it best on, where it's like here are all the different paths through. 
maybe that would spoil a little bit of the um, the mystery. But it could be really cool to see like a well. You chose this, so that led to this path, which led to this path, which led to this path. Like to see the connections in the story, I think that could be a really cool idea to be able to be like, hey, so in my story, this happened, which made this happen, which made this happen, which made this happen, which made this happen. Also, you notice there's no continue, by the way. There is an option in the game to reload older saves, right? You can do that. Uh, but once you finish the game, it's like, no, now it's just new game only. That's, that's, yeah, it wants you to stick with your choice and try it again if you want to try it again. But yeah, cool. Well, thank you very much for watching. It's been an interesting series. I'm glad that everybody seemed to enjoy it. It's a unique game. And yes, I'm going to release this. I hadn't decided it beforehand. But given that, I think I've lined the episodes up right. This is releasing on Christmas. I guess I'm going to, because it seems appropriate given it ended on Christmas. Well, it ended in April, but main ending happening Christmas. I'm going to say a Merry Christmas to everybody and I will see you in whatever comes next. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.